back here, 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 and they are where they had a zip line uh, distribution center. And um, right now, I have in the house, uh, oh, in the house, no, I'm not in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I have at the zip line distribution center a great gentleman, young man. His name is Amon Nelson. He's actually the CEO of InnoHub. Amon, please. <laughs> How are you doing, man? I'm good. Wow. InnoHub and what was the, what's the relationship? <laughs> I know you are Inohub, yeah, at Zipline, but I know you guys are linked. We're linked, yes. Yeah. So what's we have basically one main job description: let there be cash. Let, oh, I That's like my that job, job description. description. <laughs> so, uh, and there was cash. And there was <laughs> well, there be cash. <laughs> or so, there will be cash. There will be cash. So we, we've basically been engaged by the Ministry of Health to work on this project, where our job is really to engage potential sponsors and funders to commit funding to the project mm. and what we're doing in these engagements to really serve the plan of sustainability. We want this project to really outlive its first few years. So how do we find enough money to keep this mm. running mm. over and over, over the years? So mm. that's basically what you know, Hub is doing oh, on the project. Okay. Yes. So I was going to ask you about how long do we, can we sustain this? How long is this going to be sustainable? But you actually, so your whole angle to yes, this yes. is to raise funds to keep it going. Yes. Uh, wow. So you, you want to look at the project as something that really has a life shelf, and but it should really be about for how long do we need blood? For how long do we need emergency supplies? So long as there are humans being born yes. every day, humans dying every day, yes. human having an accident every day. We need them forever. Women giving birth every day. Yeah. You have snakes with us every day. Um, it, until they die, we need we need this service really to be able to keep mm. to keep lives going in these mm. areas. Yeah. Sometimes if you live in Accra, you don't understand why we're talking about drones to deliver anti-snakes, I mean syrups, and you hear comments like, oh, that project is just one fancy full thing. But if you talk to the people on the ground, you realize that there is a huge impact out there. And for the impact not to be short-lived, we need a corporate um, society, corporate bodies in Ghana, and beyond to really come to the table mm. and to sponsor this whole project. So mm. what we're doing is to raise that awareness and to engage them and to talk to them mm -hmm. and see how they can come to the, to the table to make this work. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very, very surprised, you know, coming here and seeing uh, the amount of work going on. And this is just one of the distribution centers, yes. you yes. know. Yes. So, so has it been a failure on the part of somebody not to really tell the story of Zipline? Because like you said, you yes. know, the, 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 the word of mouth is like, oh, there's some yes. basically nothing, nothing going yes. on. Yes. But it's major. So there are two scenarios I would give you. If I'm doing a 100 meter dash, I put in my point right from the beginning and I end at, after 100 meters. But if I'm doing a marathon, I gauge myself, I pace myself. And this project is more like a marathon than a 100 mm. meter dash. You, you're doing something that you don't have a clear end inside that after five years I'm done. You take your time and build up. Mm. So the stories have been out there, but what we wanted to do is let the impact story speak for itself. So you let, you let the facilities begin to run, they support the hospitals, they so support all these cheap compounds and what have you, and deliver to them, let Ghanaians who are benefiting from it begin to come out. We've seen a few stories of other media houses showing how people who are talking about they would have died without these people, women who were at the point of birth and, and were losing blood, yeah. and this came up. And now yeah. that you have some, some of these impact stories coming up, that is the right time now where we're beginning to yeah. look at yeah. really telling the story mm. out there. We're going mm. to have facilities where very soon Zipline is looking at doing open days where ultimately Ghanaians are going to be invited, oh, come open and, day. and feel Some the place for yourself. Mm. When people come in, they go like, wow, mm. what mm. we had is not what we are seeing. So, yeah. And, and yeah. some of these wow moments are the things that will be selling as things become more mm -hmm. operational. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. so, yeah. I, I was at uh, one seminar, a uh, sickle cell seminar, right. you know. I happen to be, I don't know whether to say a candidate <laughs> or, or a patient. <laughs> it is well. <laughs> but, I, but I do have a question. So there was this uh, okay. seminar I was at, and uh, there had been a, a drone delivery of some very urgent sickle cell medication needed in some village, mm -hmm. you know. And that's what, one time I heard them talking about it, and I said, oh, really? Okay, yeah. So they actually do something. They do. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's so a lot it, happening. Yeah, yeah you're right. Lot, you're yeah. right. I was asking um, Mrs. No. Abdulakou, yeah, yes. earlier. Um, these these negative stories. Um, how has that affected the growth or whatever? Whatever. At okay. stage? Um, so I'm quite 
worried sometimes when I hear comments people make out there. And most of these sadly are uninformed comments. People who have not seen. Um, and I engage a few friends and some of them say, I hear and I hear. And, I, and I'm saying, okay, have you seen? You hear there is nothing happening there. You hear the drones are crashing. You hear it's just some toys sitting here. But have you seen? And I had a chance to bring some of my friends here. And the impact is, wow. wow. But the challenge with some of these negative stories, again, is when you engage corporate bodies for sponsorship. Mm. And for some of them, based on the stories they have heard, it informs their willingness to come to the table. So we've had to spend time really engaging some of them, showing them videos and giving documentaries of how this facility mm. really mm. saving lives in the locations where they are and beyond. I mean, if you have places where you needed to take a ferry, to reach facilities and through this you are able to now just fly within a few minutes and you are there. It's big impact yeah, we're making and yeah. if you look at the SDGs on health, really access to health and its own um, accompaniment in terms of drugs and, and what have you is what we need to be doing. Mm -hmm. So if we have corporates doing CSR and, and sometimes they are in the area of health, what we try to do is to sell the right story to them mm -hmm. and let them know mm -hmm. this is the main thing. I remember I sent an email to one company and the person replied, I will not all in Ghana, what is happening on zip line? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is work to be done. Yes, you, you yes, know, yes, but yes. I think we need to as a as a nation yeah. take our time and really understand the things that go on before we talk sometimes. Sometimes mm. we speak too early. Yeah. And yeah. and by the time we, we come to understand, we don't go back and also correct the errors mm -hmm, that we have created. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. so we, we are really finding more platforms to engage mm -hmm, most of these mm -hmm, companies mm -hmm. to re fine tune their mind. And, and basically erode some of the negative things they've heard mm -hmm. and let them know the true stories mm -hmm. on the ground. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. And then, like I was telling you, you all, like, all of you involved are like very young guys, <laughs> man. <laughs> it feels good and I love it. I love <laughs> yes. it. That we have such a, a dynam yeah. dynamic, vibrant youth running operations like this. Yeah. You know, I, during my tour, I asked somebody, one lady was showing me some things. I said, so what did you study to get here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because they all look so sharp. Everybody yeah. knows what they are talking about. And then they are so, you know, on point. On point, yes. I was like, where did you all train? Yes. And, and so, these are all young Ghanaians yeah. who are basically making things work. Some of them have moved from their comfort of Accra to this place, to Vopsy, to I mean, other places villages where they normally wouldn't have spent their time but they, when they come and see what is happening they want to commit to this and they want to spend years and these are mostly from uh, KN USD, mm -hmm. from UMAT, other mm -hmm. places where all these young Ghanaians are really up to the table and making this work and for me my passion about this project really is because I see it could be me on this road I could be driving from Kumasi to Accra I can get a crash I may need blood and we see, we've seen stories of taxi drivers who just had accident on the road and blood was sent from here to save them. It could be anybody and, and God forbid, but it could be anybody's mother, anybody's father. So if we, we want to really as a country move forward in some of these, we need to depoliticize some of these conversations. Because if you are in an accident mm. and a drone is being dispatched, yeah. the drone will not ask, is it an MPP <laughs> blood or an <laughs> blood that they need? <laughs> if it's London, they won't ask you of your party, yeah. party color yeah. or your, your yeah. ID card, anybody yeah. at all. Yeah. You know, so we as a country need to depoliticize some of these conversations mm -hmm. and see young Ghanaians are really getting to mm -hmm. work to make this work. Mm -hmm. How can can we make it sustainable? Mm. You know, mm. make sure it's not just a nine-day wonder, but mm. it's really going to be mm. a thousand-day wonder if there's anything mm. like that. My yeah. final question: um, What's what's your success rate with the fundraising? Is it mostly local or international? I know you've worked in all places: yes. Saka, Berlin, <laughs> Johannesburg, yeah. everywhere you've been. Yes. You know, doing yeah. fund management and stuff like that. Yes. What's your success rate here with with Zipline? So, so it's been amazingly encouraging. Mm. Um, we would have thought that because of some of the noise people are making, companies are going to be hesitant. But we've had very good commitment. Some of them are coming because it's early days. Some are committing $4 million over a four-year period where mm. they want to do $1 million every year. Um, you have others who are also able to do $25,000 um, because they are smaller companies. So it's been very encouraging um, locally. Mm. But quite importantly, as we have some very good international commitments, mm. like the setup fee for this whole place. 
the international sponsors who are making it happen oh, all fantastic. around the country. Yeah. Um, and then locally, you have quite some good response rates. Like I said, somebody, a company has committed $4 million to be dispersed over a four-year period. Mm. And it's quite an mm. exciting one to see. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So this is completely private sector yes. funding? Yes. <laughs> I'm I'm surprised. I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know because there's stories. Uh, the the government is putting a lot of money. So yeah. We some um, talk a lot. Yeah. But the truth is, one, the health facility don't pay anything to receive the delivery. Patients don't pay anything. I mean, nobody pays anything. All these it's, drones flying up and down. No guardian is paying anything on at that level. It's basically corporate bodies, international donors who are basically see, coming to the table see, to make I it see. work. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. yeah. so are there any like corporate uh, sponsors that you'd like to give some big ups to? I mean, I mean, yes. those who <laughs> really <laughs> yes. help, yeah. So in terms of the setup so far and uh, all the setup being done, we have the Bill and the Gates Foundation really giving quite some good funding for this. Really? Then okay. there is Gavi, then there is UPS, and there is Pfizer. So for, these are very committed to make sure all the setups being done okay. are fully covered exclusively by them. So fantastic. Yes. Let's show them some love. Now. Is there a number, a contact, maybe some corporate, somebody's watching now watching, yes. that may think they may want to talk to you about putting in some funds? Yes, yeah. so, so there's two you? things. It um, can be an email, but I think the first is a phone, it's a phone number, not an email. So okay. um, we have a phone number for this operation is 0246-02471400. 0246-02471400. Okay. Or 0202407144. Okay. Once you call that, we will be wherever okay. you are, we're going to find you and okay. take your money. Because <laughs> we need okay. to save lives. Sure, yes. sure. Mm -hmm. The numbers are on your screen right now. And like he just said, we need to save lives. Yeah. Uh, lives that would have been totally forgotten. We need to save lives. So the number is on your screen right now. So the any corporate sponsors out there and uh, you want to chip in, please do feel free to call and. Uh, we thank you in advance. Nothing, thank, thank you, you so much, man. <laughs> thank you very much, too. <laughs> and it's a pleasure getting all this education from you. We are glad. And <laughs> our doors are always open. Always come in here and see what's happening. We'll do. Yeah, we'll do. Should. We'll do. <laughs> Let's stick around and be right back. The KSM Show.